As an artist, I love everything I create, right? Wrong. Here's a perfect example of a painting I made two years ago, and I used to love it. I loved it enough that I got it professionally framed, but now, now not so much. Now I don't even want to hang it. So I am going to risk ruining the painting to prove that two years later I can make something better with it. I was actually thinking, can I call myself Creative Paula if I don't find a creative way to upcycle this into something I want to display in my home? So here goes nothing because there's no going back after this. Okay, so I'm outside with my paint can and I have some moments of hesitation, but I go for it. First issue, I don't know if you can tell, as soon as I started spray painting, a swarm of little bugs came over and decided to land on my painting. You can see them falling. I didn't notice at the beginning, but as these little dots appeared on the surface, I saw what was happening. I shortly faced the second problem, which was the nozzle got clogged. I was able to change it to have a better flow and I moved forward covering the whole thing. I then also have to use a little piece of paper to remove some of the bugs that were stuck everywhere. But they didn't left a mark so I left it alone drying in the sun before moving to painting on top of it. Okay, so you don't know this, but it's been two whole weeks since I spray painted this thing. And um, it's been two weeks because after it dried, I feel in fact I have ruined it. And I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's been staring at me from my easel every day and I was like, what can I do with it? Now it's even worse. But today I decided I'm gonna take a shot at it and I'm gonna try to fix it because I did have some time uh, after taping and posting two other videos and now I feel fresher and less frustrated, so I'm gonna try. So in a way, this is a whole new intro for me, for me, not for you, but for me. <laughs> and I wanted to take two seconds to thank Phoebe, Tara and Kirsten for your thoughtful comments. Thank you so much. And especially Kirsten, thank you so much for taking the time to send me the card that you made inspired by mine. I really appreciate it. And if any of you ever wanna send me something you made uh, inspired by my content, please do so. That makes me really, really happy. And I think the easiest way to do it is just by sharing it through DM, through my Instagram account that is related to this channel. And okay, so now I'm a little bit more pumped. I'm gonna try to fix it. Let's see. Back on Boys Over, charged with new energy for this project. <laughs> I completely scratched whatever idea I had where I started and I'm ready to fix this or at least to try to. The first thing I did was grab some acrylic paint and covered everything with a layer of black, but with a brush this time. This did make things a little more even, so that was a relief. With said layer dried, I brought in a pen marker to draw the design I decided to make. This time around, I thought it best to try something digitally, so I did a sketch of the drawing on my iPad first. I don't have footage of me drawing, but here's a little time lapse of what I drew. I'm going for something really, really graphic because in my professional art practice, I've been working on top of pictures lately and drawing flowers like this. So I wanted to keep that theme going for this painting. And remember, you can always check into my Instagram to see what I'm doing there. It's different from what I do here, but maybe you'll like it too. In any case, that's what I started to draw with my Poscas. Once I had laid out all of the basic shapes, I started to cover all of the areas of my design with a brush and paint. Now this took a lot of layers, a lot. <laughs> this is one of the beauties of painting on top of black. And again, what was I thinking? I didn't really have a plan when I first thought of this and just spray painted it, the whole thing.
Anyhow, after five or six layers of paint for each flower, especially the area with the texture of the frame, I wish I hadn't chosen a frame like this now because it was really hard to get into those crevices with the paint. But anyhow, and during all of the many layers, I moved forward to some details, which I decided to do with paint markers again. As I said before, I was going for a really graphic style, so I did some thick outlining. Starting with the easiest part, which was the teal, because I knew what color I wanted to use. It was fun to go through all the layers of the framing with a continuous line, even around the edges of the frame. For the flowers, I wasn't so sure what color to use, but I decided to contrast the white with the bald color. So after swatching it on the top, I went with the coral pink. I loved doing the outlining. This part of the process was super satisfying to do, and it really helped me put everything together. Once I was done with the flowers, I wanted to take care of that heart that I put in the middle. I really love hearts. I would have them everywhere. So I wanted to have one in this piece since I'm painting it for myself and I'm going to be displaying this at my home. As I added details, there were parts that were hard to reach with the Poscas, but all I did for that was take some paint out of the markers with a little brush and then I could get into those difficult areas. I decided to tie the flowers more with the heart by adding the same red around the centers and also by adding a couple extra hearts to the whole composition. I don't know if this was the best idea because each heart took about six or seven layers of paint to look even and nice, but at the end I think it was worth it. In between painting the layers for the hearts, I kept adding those black dots and more details to my main heart. I also gave the whole thing an outline with black marker, and although the difference in color is barely visible, I still believe it adds a little something to the composition. It was time to bring in the gold marker to do some more details on all of the hearts. I always try to leave it as the very last step because it takes much, much longer to dry and I usually end up making a mess smudging the gold around. And it seems like just like that, a day after of work, the painting was done. I kept it really simple, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So now I am displaying it in the back of my studio on my new shelves that I just got today. I think it looks great. And you'll be seeing it on all of my next videos because it'll be proudly in the background. I hope you enjoyed my little transformation and I'll see you next time. Have the most wonderful week. Bye.